the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape, so... Okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and 10 20-win seasons. It's coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Yes, it's a beautiful morning here at Top Golf in Boise. We are right here uh, at the Eagle View Landing. We're having fun. I came with the family last night, got a chance to uh, let the boys play a little bit on the simulator. We had a lot of fun at uh, Top Golf, and uh, the man that helped uh, bring this uh, palace to Boise is going to point us in just a second here. Tommy Alquist, uh, perfect, beautiful evening, uh, sun setting. Um, there's my kid. I got the baseball swing too much a little bit still with the uh, with the golf swing, but uh, really enjoyed it. It's fun for all ages. We had an awesome time, and uh, I know an area Mike Prater would love the bar. Uh, very, very, uh, very large TVs. They could break it down. They had the playoff baseball on yesterday. Uh, my kids were enjoying also the uh, outdoor area. You've got the mini golf course, which I don't know if everyone's familiar with or knows is here. We're sitting out here by that. You obviously have the uh, uh, bags games, the all that area. It was a, an awesome time last night. Really enjoyed it, and uh, we're uh, excited to uh, to be here. As I said, uh, bring you live. There we are. We got uh, we got Mike Prater. You know him. You love him. Maybe you hate him. Who knows? Uh, or not? Yes. <laughs> and we got uh, our man Tommy Alquist with uh, BVA uh, hanging out today. Man, appreciate you coming by and, and uh, hanging out with us. Pleasure being here, BJ. Appreciate all you do. This is uh, before we kind of get into the hardcore football talk. This place right here, uh, BVA, and, and having uh, you know Top Golf in this facility. I know for a long time people were wanting to try to get Top Golf here, and there was I know I was even DMing you. When's it coming? When's it coming? And, and uh, to finally get it done and get it open, it's pretty cool. It's been great. You know, it's uh, it's it's great family entertainment, and it's it's been it's exceeded all expectations. Uh, it's the smallest market they've ever opened one in, wow. and I, that's an interesting fact. And it's by profitability the number one market they've ever opened one in. Wow. We tried to talk them into add another potential to add the bays on top, and they're like, "Hey, the market's just not going to allow that." But which you know, I heard the they're now admitting might have been a mistake. 
They admitted it. They okay. admitted it early. I think it took like about a month or two being open, and they're like, we, we should have listened. But, hey, listen, you called it a palace. We love this thing. We love being here. Uh, and and I'll t- I got a, one other plug for Top Golf. The, the quality of their inv- individuals from the top down. We deal with a lot of different businesses and, and, and ownership groups and just amazing humans. And, uh, you know, if you surround yourself with people like that that are successful, uh, things usually go well. And, and this is certainly no exception. Prater, what, you're a fan of Top Golf, right? Yeah, no, I've played in Top Golf in uh, three or four different states and I've uh, been here a couple of times and uh, absolutely love Top Golf. It is the family deal. And it's the only time I can get my kids on a golf course. It's probably the only time I want to get my kids on a <laughs> golf course. And uh, we love it out here. And for the record, when I'm out here, golf is the priority and the bar is the secondary thing. So I just <laughs> well, wanted to make can, that perfectly clear. They can bring the alcohol to, they can bring the alcohol to you. So uh, is it open as a bloody Mary time? Yeah, I, I don't know what they're usually on the radio. You can't, but on podcast or uh, live streaming, I don't know what the rules are. I think I've broken that at the James a few times with Kent Riddle on the post game show. But uh, we're excited to be here. We're going to talk more about BVA uh, as we go along here and what you guys got going on. And uh, BVA obviously is bringing us out here. You guys have come on board recently as a uh, major sponsor and we're truly appreciative of that i even brought you some gifts by the way don't let me forget to uh to uh, let you leave here with some gifts tommy but we appreciate you guys and helping uh this man is sitting right here in part because of this man right here so uh we appreciate it and i know you're a big fan of mike prater's huge fan of mike prater not a fan of his last column but a big fan in general <laughs> um listen i i love what you're doing i mean with media changing the world we live in uh everything's changing and so to be at the forefront of that and not see change as a as a problem but as an opportunity watching the way you're setting up uh bronco nation news it's been it's been impressive and inspiring and we're just happy to help well i appreciate that it's uh, folks like you that are making it possible and we got some great business leaders some great bsu supporters like yourself that are helping make this happen so uh all right uh what a week in Boise State Athletics. What a season, I guess, in Boise State football. And you guys have both been around here a lot longer than me, but this is my 11th season uh, covering the football team. And I, I, during that game when it was going south against Memphis, the post-game show in the last you know 72 hours, I, I can't remember in my uh, mind as much angst, as much uneasiness, uh, frustration. I mean, I know the, the UTEP loss is probably close, but just in general, uh, it's been a crazy couple of days here with fans starting to get a little restless with the direction of the program. And I guess before we get into the column, but... Uh, Tommy, what's just your take right now on the program and where things are at and, and uh, just uh, interesting times right now? You know, as I get older, I, I like to, uh, you know, first of all, it's sports, right? We're fans. It's fanatics, right? We're supposed to be passionate about this. We love it. We we, we live and die with our teams and it, it's what it's supposed to be. And everyone's got an opinion and it's just my opinion. But but in my life, I, I like looking at really important things like if you look at the importance of athletics and what Boise State has meant to this community in the last 20 years it's really everything yep. think of the last recession and what happened think of the growth think of the program think of that fiesta bowl that we were all at and it's just really important too so when everyone's getting all lathered up and fired up and, and freaking out on on and, and making really really dumb comments on 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 uh emotion you also do need to step back it's these are these are student athletes these are coaches. Listen, they're more passionate than we are. They, they love this program, this town more than we do. So, so just have a little grace is my thing. And then, and then finally, I'm, as I get older, I, I ask this question all the time. There's a few books that I make everyone read that works for me. And one is leadership and self-deception. And, and, and in that book, you have to ask yourself, is it true? Is it really true? And if you ask that question, some of the stuff in hyperbole that's out there, is it true? Is it really true? Some of this stuff is just, is just nonsense. And Listen, I'm a huge Jeremiah Dickey guy. I, I mean, I've been around leaders in all sorts of healthcare, politics, every single thing you can think. I think he's one of the finest leaders I've ever known in my life. Andy Avalos might be one of the most genuine, hardworking, wonderful coaches and leaders of men that I've ever known. So that's where I start. And I think you got to say, what, what's the ethos of the program you want? And then take a deep breath and not get into some of this hyperbole. So what? So what? Uh, in because you, know, you were not calling for Andy Avalos to be fired in your no, column. Not, uh, even, not even close. We, we saw your tweet. And I know it's, it's some in good fun, but what? What was your uh, issue with Mike Prater's column here? Well, I love Prater. I mean, until you got the yeah, paragraph, until he gets disappointed. No, by Prater. no, no, Welcome no, to the club. <laughs> listen, I, I'm, I'm probably the first guy all the years that reads his reads his columns, and I just think that his words matter, and I think sometimes. You know, when you throw a little fuel on a fire, it just, I'm like, man, don't throw fuel on that fire. It's too early. It's too early. Yeah. I mean, we lost to probably the number one team in the country. We had a couple of plays that if they would have gone one way or the other, none of this happens. And what is it true? Is it really true? We've got coaches that are the envy of the nation, the quality of individual. 
everything I've ever done in my life, if you surround yourself with the people that are like Andy Avalos and like Jeremiah Dickey, and you support and you get through hard times, you're better off than than this crazy talk of, hey, change and whatever. And, and you only need to, listen, there's guys that are vaping in pajamas in basements tweeting all over the place, and they only need a, <laughs> they only need a little bit. You just throw them a little bit. So that's, that's why what, I was so pissed. I'm like, uh, Prater, Prater throws those guys a little bit of stuff, and then they vape two, two more things, and they... You know, they're not, you, you should be a writer. That's so descriptive. That's beautiful. <laughs> Vaping in your basement. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't say mom's basement. They'll go back to their <laughs> video games if you don't feed them, Prater. <laughs> I, I totally get what you're saying, and we'll get after this. And, and you know, you're 100% right about Jeremiah. You're 100% right about Andy Avalos and the leadership and, and the quality of human beings that they are. There, there's no doubt about that. And I tried to make sure that this column wasn't personal. The one thing that I will say, because you're not wrong, you're a thousand percent right. But the one thing I will say here is that even Andy Avalos stood up a, as a grown ass man on, on Monday morning behind that podium and, and said, we do have a problem. We do have to fix this quarterback situation. I got three days to kind of fix this quarterback situation. The defense, you know, I, I know the quarterback controversy is sexy. The defense is the biggest problem. And I probably should have focused a little bit more on the defense, although at Idaho Sports Talk this week, we certainly have. But uh, they have a quarterback problem. They have a they have a a defensive problem they need to get it fixed but look at what happened last year they got it fixed last year and back to your point these are the two guys jeremiah dickey and andy avalos who can get this thing taken care of so i, I think it's ridiculous all the talk about andy avalos being fired bush hamden being fired spencer danielson being fired nowhere i mean I, I don't even think about those things in my thoughts and my thoughts go in some pretty dark places sometimes but uh not even close to that they just have a couple of problems in a very good program and in a very good environment that they need to clean up a little bit. And hopefully they can get on track Saturday and go off and do what they do what they did last year. Now, Tommy, first, before you jump back in, we did have a comment from Bill L. He says, Tommy, I'm not in my pajamas. I'm in my underwear. Get it right. <laughs> Be more accurate. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. <laughs> but Tommy, you I, I know you have to look big picture of the program and it's not, you know, but but at some point the wins and losses do matter. I mean, how do you sure. how do you look at I know you have personal relationships and stuff, and that's got to make it a little tougher, but uh, you know, for for the general fan out there they're, they're they they want to they want to see some wins so how, how do you look at it sure they want to see some wins but 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 listen entitlement is part of our society today we are not entitled to being undefeated we are not entitled to win a, a championship every year or to be in a in a in a new year's day game right we, we're not and it's hard yeah and nil has made it worse and the transfer portal has made it hard and we live in a small market I got stats ready for this thing because I, I wanted to see how much funding. I saw those. Look at the funding yep. of our program. Look at the size of our town. Look at our market we're in. We are blessed to have had the history we've got, and we are blessed to have the people we have now. And if, if we can just be patient and let some of the stuff work through without – that that's my whole point. I think Prater just said it really, really well because the wins will come, right? But if we're going to – if we're going to – listen, if as a Bronco Nation we're going to judge everything by those first few games – that is a horrible barometer. I look at next year, Oregon State and Oregon back to back. If the whole season's blown on those two games, look at their funding. Look at the, look at we're the little engine that could still, guys. Yeah. We still are, and we need to we need to act like that. Yeah, Mike. I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned so, you know you don't want Andy Avalos fire, but you know, there's some other talk coaching staff players. I mean, I know it's a it is a long season, and maybe eight games from now we do this again, and uh, the week of the conference championship game that's going to be in Boise, and they're they're uh, you know nine and three or whatever. But uh, you know, it, it, Mike, you've been here on here a long time, and you know, if it, it's, with what we're seeing just on the field, I think some of the fans' frustration is warranted. Yeah, no, I, I do see that. Uh, you know, probably not to the level of what we saw it this week. I, I thought the level of, of, of attacking coaches, attacking personal people, attacking Andy Avalos, attacking Bush Hamden, attacking Spencer Danielson, attacking quarterbacks, attacking the defense, I, the level of which I've seen that this year or this week is beyond – I'll go back to Rod Jensen days. I mean, I, I'm having a lot of Rod Jensen flashbacks. And Rod Jensen was one of the greatest human beings that we've all worked with at Boise State. But he just he wasn't getting the job done, and it became very personal against a very, very wonderful human being. And, and I thought that that was kind of gross, and it went on forever. And eventually, he just didn't get it taken care of. I think this coaching staff, this football team, will get it taken care of. I have all the faith in the world in Andy Avalos, and I've never once even responded to anything about Andy Avalos. The guys in the basement in their underwear vaping, to screw you guys. I mean, Andy Avalos <laughs> should not lose his job. Nobody should lose their job. I just want him to fix a couple of, 
a couple of warts on this football team right now. A couple of small warts. A couple and of you don't, fixable and you don't think they want to fix them? Well, of course they do. Gosh, of course they do. It, of guys. course they I do. Mean, Maybe I should have yeah. sat in the middle here. You know, you know, I mean, <laughs> no, of course they do. And that's what Andy Avalos did on, on Monday at the podium. Yeah. He stood up and said, I need to, here, here are the issues. He had, he agreed with the issues. He identified the issues. And damn it, we're going to spend the rest of this week trying to fix these issues. And, and, oh, and to be clear, this is what makes sports fun, right? I mean, Absolutely. Uh, this is what makes it fun because we all can sit back and say, hey, this, this is what I do. But but listen, the, the le- I guess my point back is just the level it gets to is yeah. just – and again, I go back to what's really true. What's the ethos of the program you want? What's the ethos of the coach you want? And you start checking those boxes, and you're like, okay, we got that. So how, let's how- let's just – you yeah. know, and I think I think you get older too, and you see that firing everybody the second things don't work out the no, way you want. That's, no. that's that's the, that's entitled mentality that that is not leadership. How am I supposed to debate a guy that's already dropped ethos three times in the first ten minutes? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. That's not if you're a professional. I'm just a guy that hacks out some words in my basement, in my now, underwear once a week. Now you bring up you bring up the, you bring up the budget, and I was a proponent for a long time of the basketball budget not being very good. Yeah. And I for years said, hey, they're not getting many charter flights. They're not getting a lot of the stuff a lot of the other schools are getting, and and um, that stuff adds up over time. And a lot of fans just saw me as an excuse maker. Or I'm you know carrying yeah. Leon's water, whatever. Well, guess what? the last three years when they started getting yeah. the budget they needed all of a sudden they've been in the tournament two times they're i mean that this it, i don't think it's a coincidence the budget has, it's still not great it's now middle of the pack instead of at the bottom but i think the budget for the basketball team fans i think mike prater might have even didn't want to hear my my uh, excuses about that you know three years ago well why does a why does having to take a connecting flight from you know denver to wherever to get to where you're going matter in march when that's in january i mean that stuff added up and now these more charter flights all this stuff is mattering and now they're not great, but they're middle of the pack in basketball budget. And someone put on here that they, you know, the overall state funding budget that they're getting is last in the Mountain West Conference. You got some numbers here. I'll let you. Oh, he always oh, got color copies. He's got <laughs> black, I, I, listen, bar charts. I, 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 no, but I, but <laughs> I have that when you're done. But I will tell you. Listen, oh my God! Like you, you are like it, naive is not the word. It is it, you lack any business acumen if you think that the funding of a program. This is a. This is. I mean. Jeremiah is the CEO of an athletic department. Andy is the CEO of a, a big business. And, and if you don't think funding matters, and you are handicapped in this state, right? Yep. You look at the way the legislature works. You look at the way funding happens here. And, and then compare that against other really good red states right next to us. I mean, we're in, we're in the Mountain West. Right? We're not comparing to these, these places that have money flowing everywhere. Sure. Look at our endowment. Look at And look at what's happened since Jeremiah and Andy got here. On every, like, look at any metric on... On engagement of alumni, look at engagement of, of folks that are donating to the school. Look at the, I mean, it, it, the Lyle Smith Society. You go on and on. It, yep. it, we are headed in the right direction. I, I want to ask you a very specific question because of your very specific background. And yes, this guy did once run for governor and probably, and definitely there's, should have been there, elected. There's comments on here saying, still think you should be governor. Yeah, I still think you should be governor, but that's my own personal opinion. We wouldn't opinion. be sitting at Top Golf and I'd be like <laughs> in the fetal position somewhere. <laughs> Serious question, though, because we've been debating this for 20 years around here, maybe even longer. Should there be more state-appropriated money given to this athletic department and this football team? Absolutely. hundred. I mean, you look at return on investment of dollars and go back to that. I went back to 07. Go back to 07 um, and the funding that we've had. It's gone up a little bit. And compare what's happened in every other program in our conference since 07. We're last we're last. Think of the economic development that happens in this state, in this region, because it's the tax dollars that come in. Yep. Look at look look at the during the recession. It was Boise State that had the only. I mean, 07 Fiesta Bowl. They're growing. They're expanding. They're coming into downtown when everyone else was dead. We Boise State is the fabric of this community from a business sense. Look at what what is the currency of business? It's kids that are educated, right? They integrate so well with our community. They do so much more than this. So, and then it's fun to have the football too. But yep. this is a bigger picture, and they need to invest more. Yeah, I mean, we even saw like uh, not from the state funding, but in terms of the business partners, we saw Nevada's getting the brand new uh, football or uh, basketball arena. Colorado State's got a new football sure. stadium. Uh, San Diego State's got a new football. St- I know in a perfect world, Jeremiah would just have San Diego State's football stadium built in the same spot where i mean that's exactly it's got the suites the right attendance but you just can't you know completely redo uh albertson stadium but you mentioned the budget before i, I want to talk about nil but uh what what any favorite numbers you have there you did all this work is there anything you want to point out well, or- i just it confirms like if you just look at the funding we have we are still the little engine that could we're, we're not yes we've had tremendous success i would argue 
I would argue we are we're a victim of our own success. Okay. Because college football, name any program, and Mike and I are alum of University of Utah. You have times where you don't have the perfect quarterback, and and you and you suck for a while, and then you have times where you have a great quarterback in college football, and it's fine. And yep. we go through the Kellen Moore era, and you go just every year. We, it's just we've been spoiled. And sometimes you don't have the lightning in the bottle at quarterback, so don't blow the whole thing up when it happens. Yeah. And I think even Taylor Green, I mean, you know, he's a young kid. He has some dynamic plays this year. He's, I mean, he's incredible. Yeah. Who knows? And and you look at his stats, and I mean, I get it all, but but are we are, are we throwing him under the bus too soon? Yeah. You know, I mean, are, you know, a couple of non non conference games early, a couple of plays, and the whole entire you know. The whole the whole thing's falling apart. Well, part That's of that two was field goals. two field goals, two full, two field one, goals. one good, one bad. You know, or then, both bad actually. And I, I'm not trying to like blame any one person, but but some of the end Diablo's criticism though is because they were putting in Maddox Madsen and kind of created some of this kind of sure controversy themselves. Hey, listen, I guess, but yeah, it's I'm, good to have a quarterback competition, right? Oh, for, you, you know, you're, you're, you get up and compete every morning. Yeah, I, I, and listen, I'm I'm really good at a lot of things and probably really good at second guessing during the games. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> but but I, but but like at some point too who knows what's going on in the locker room who knows how things are going and i do think all that matters and and uh, you got to trust some things happen to now you said you both university of utah alums we saw the big deal yesterday where um they the collective came out and giving a six-month lease of a new truck to literally all 85 scholarship players which my first thought was that sucks for the 20 walk-ons like that doesn't seem right the entire <laughs> team my second thought is good luck finding your car in the parking lot um but but what what i mean uh I, you know and i know that's as you mentioned, we're not. There's different playing fields. I get it for different levels yeah. and things. But um, you know, one of the things is Boise State football did not have much success this year in the transfer portal. They did not. They brought in some Power Five guys that haven't worked out. And I had another uh, booster kind of send me a text message the other night, just saying like when they saw that could happen, and they said that we're so far behind because if we want to try to get some quality transfers and some quality players in here, the NIL stuff. You know, Joe Nichols doing the best he can. I love the Horseshoe Collective. They got the beer. It's great. They got some other stuff. But uh, big picture, the collective, I think Mike Prater is still well behind the NIL. Boise State's well behind in the NIL game. Yeah, and I wanted to debate that certainly today with you. Uh, the NIL thing to me is, is massive. And it's making a difference. And it's what the kids want today. And Boise State's doing a decent job. This community, I, Boise State's doing a fantastic job. Mike Walsh and Joe Nickel and those crew, they're doing a fantastic job squeezing as much lemon out of they can out of this out of lemonade out of this lemon. But I, I'm, and this is where I want you to jump in here, Tommy. The community itself, I'm not sure the community has responded in terms of NIL. I mean, Ashton Genty's getting hats and t shirts and free pizza. When, when other well, when other guys, stars are getting hundred thousand I mean, dollars in a car. Come on now, now listen. Is it true? Is it really true? I spent all day yesterday down in Utah. We're doing a bunch of business down there, right? So it it's timely. I just got back. Okay. Go go take an hour next time you drive through and drive around and look at what's going on down there from an economic development, from business attractment. It's just, I mean, everyone says we're so far behind. We think we're in first place. We're worse than that, right? We're like, we're, but we're not far behind because of commitment of companies. There's just not that number of, I mean, it's exponentially more the number of dollars down there for everything, for infrastructure. We talk about sewer. We can talk about roads. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. And it's the same thing for NIL. You just don't have as many dollars. So there's guys like us and Adam Rowe and people like we're doing everything we can. But yeah. for us, a few hundred thousand dollars a year is a lot to give to a pro you see what i'm saying but we need bigger you know some of that will come we're at eight hundred thousand people here in the valley we're just still the little engine that could we're not going to have the same nil deals as these metropolitan areas that have two million people yeah that makes sense i mean the patience part absolutely makes sense and i'm guilty of that as well i mean salt lake city is chasing uh, major league baseball and national hockey league yeah. franchises as we speak and and we want you know ashton genty to get you know a lunch deal so the growth needs to be there and we need to be patient um, but I, I don't know if the, the kids themselves are patient and the transfer portal, I think, is connected they're, to they're not. The NIL. So then here's the reality, right? If I can go to a, a Power 5 school and have hundreds of thousands of dollars of NIL or come to Boise, Idaho and have T-shirts and, and you know pizzas, it's going to influence those decisions. So rather than make it about someone failing, it's the reality of where we live. Yeah. It is the reality. And, and, and we're not entitled to well, because we've got blue turf and we won the Fiesta Bowl, we should have more of our businesses committing more dollars to the NIL. We don't have that many businesses and people are doing their best. And, and, and the other thing that pisses me off, it's the people that bitch and moan the most or don't ever put any money in. Yeah. 
you know, go go get the people that are actually the Joe Nickel, the people that are actually doing this stuff and out there grinding and, and finding these dollars for the NIL deals. See what they have to say about the program and Jeremiah Dickey and Andy Avalos. They're fans. So what would be your uh, suggestion if, if, if they're, if ever, if, I mean, you say you can't just find more businesses on trees or more billions of dollars sitting around Boise, Idaho, but uh, what what can or what do you see in terms of the future of the direction here? Well, I think it's consistency. It's having the right people. It's the right people in the right seats on the bus. I mean, go back to that, right? And I think where are you going to go find better people than the people we have on the bus? You got to be patient and then you got to win. You got to win. I'm not yeah. saying you're not going to win, but but to overreact in non-conference games early and make that your thing every year, that you know, th nothing will tear this program apart more than that because it is consistency. It is trust. It is it is getting to know a guy like Jeremiah Dickey and Andy Avalos. They're going to get you to want to invest, right? What's going to take you away from that if you're a local business is 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 this crazy turnover and change. So. Uh, I, again, is it true? Like before we react, what's really true for us and what market are we in? And are we being entitled about this? And then like anything else, I, I think the like in anything you do in your life, it's the, the formula for, sac for success is vision, vision, clarity. Okay. So vision is first clarity, and then you need to have a plan and then relentless action, right? I think these guys got the vision. I think it's clear what they're trying to do. They've got a great, but now action. They got to work their butts off, and they got to win. I'm not saying they yeah, don't have to win. Sure. They got to win. They got to win. You're and, just saying you expect them. They're, when the season's up, they're still going to have a lot more wins. They're going to have a lot more wins, yeah. and you know what? We're probably going to lose to Oregon next year. Guess what? We're probably going to lose. We're probably going to Utah. State. Just, Utah just got their clock cleaned by Oregon State. That's yeah. a tough game. So if we lose those two games, we're going to fire them next year. Are you <laughs> kidding me? The one thing that you keep talking about the reality of this situation, and the one thing I think we need to make, this community is responding to Boise State Athletics. And Jeremiah Dickey's raised, what, $50 million oh over the last two years, and he's, he's closing in on $80 million. That's money that could normally be spent on a football program or NIL when, in fact, he inherited a 50-year-old dump of a concrete football stadium that he's just trying to fix. He spent most of his time fixing the infrastructure, not the sexy stuff. He's trying to figure out the caulking in the building. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's a true story. Yeah. I mean, you, you inherit a dumpster fire. You raise all this money for both sides, and, and you're doing a great, by the way, talk to anyone who's met with him in the business community, doing a great job there. And in the middle of all that, you're putting up with this kind of crap. Think if he think if he inherited a nice football stadium yeah. and he had eighty million dollars in his pocket right now, what he could do with it. My favorite story about this stuff is Leon Rice last yeah, year. Yeah, the lights. He walked around and counted eighty six missing lights, and he went and bought eighty six <laughs> lights and put the damn lights in the building himself because nobody was putting in the lights. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, and then and then you got the legislature. We don't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus, right. plus, we got to have a good day today. All right. All right, Mike Prater, we're gonna you're gonna go first in the uh, simulator here. We're gonna while I talk to Tommy, we're gonna get you set up, Mike. Uh, any any trash talking or final words? So we're gonna do. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Quick nine, I think I it's gonna it. be nine <laughs> shots. You get three. We're just gonna do the little chipping here. You know, you guys aren't loosened up. We didn't want to bust out the driver and make you know Mike feel bad if Tommy's out driving him by fifty yards. So <laughs> yeah. um, we're just gonna do the short the short uh, nine shots here on the. Th short ones while we're talking and i got some gifts for tommy i'm going to give them while we're doing this but mike uh, how you feeling about this i can i can i can swing a wedge nine times okay so well, red the red yellow or red, you, yellow and green uh and we'll have uh, Jaden finch our intern over here help set you up and make sure you're ready to go on the right uh bay but mike prater is going to be first and while mike's going and getting set up me and tommy are going to continue the uh the discussion here uh tommy your thoughts on uh, mike prater's what you're expecting to see you know, if you've ever golfed with him before yet or not no but, mocking uh, me as i walk away right, from this so <laughs> so so uh, we've got a mutual friend jeff baker who has played with prater okay and i know that this guy's really good so you've uh, heard some good things yeah. about mike prater's golf swing i've heard here. some really good things about mike Prater's. okay golf well swing. he is going over here and he is going to get set up we see him getting ready here we we, we don't have the best right. We don't have the best lighting over here, so I uh, make sure you're set up, Mike, for the three. You can tell just the way he holds the look at the way he holds the club. Look the way, yeah, I, I'm in trouble. We're this is, this we're is, we're, uh, we're this, good to go here. It looks like gonna, on, uh, not going to end well. That's you're yeah. going for the wrong red, Mike. We're go Mike. We're going right here, Mike. We're going right here for the little red one right in front, right in front. Yeah, a little chip shot here. He doesn't even follow the rules here, so he's he's already in, he's already behind. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's actually called brown. That's that gets me too. They call that brown, even though it's uh, red out there, a little further out. Yeah. But uh, uh, all right, here we go. We'll see. We got three shots on the. Uh, what what, what, are you, what are you what are you aiming for? <laughs> I'm so confused. Mike Prater. I what? thought you were trying to so hit the ball to this little red flag. Hitting right uh, live golf balls here uh, on the air. Uh, this is uh, this is this is great stuff here. So he's got one more on the red. We'll see if we can get this. That looks a little bit better. 
Still missed it. Okay. Make sure it's uh, – Mike, make sure it's registering, but you're now going to go for the yellow, but make sure it registers first. Okay. Uh, Tommy, while well, he's hitting here, I do have some gifts for you. I, I, I told you that I wanted to uh, thank you for what you're doing for Bronco Nation News. These are just small gifts, nothing big here. But uh, I got a Bronco Nation News hat for you. Oh, I love it. Everybody likes the uh, Bronco Nation News hat, so we'll, uh, we'll give you that. We got a uh, Bronco Nation News uh, T-shirt. And then, uh, uh, by the way, like the one your son was wearing during the game, he did make on it on the TV? yes, he did. How about, I, want, I need oh, Darren, baby. I need Darren Ravel to let hey, us know what the uh, what, what it's going to be, what what the value of that and, was. And if but, I've uh, got to have someone on the back, I'd love it to be Matty. There you go, Matt Bowsher. That was these were the uh, shirts from our golf tournament. So, yeah. uh, how are we doing back there? We got any points yet? 16. We got sixteen points. So he did hit the. Uh, we're going for one more on the yellow there. Oh, all look right, at that. okay, look okay. Uh, and then uh, I do have a. Uh, Bronco Nation News uh, golf glove for you, oh. if you need a golf glove. And then the uh, the nice kind of final present for you here is a, a dozen golf balls with the uh, BNN logo on them oh, for you there. You. So uh, I'll actually just trade you, and we'll give you this bag at the end. But okay. uh, seriously, thanks. thanks. Thank uh, you. We appreciate you. I know uh, you guys are, are uh, you know smart business folks with how you spend your money, and and uh, hopefully this is a start of a long term partnership here because I know what you guys are doing for the community is great and. Uh, like I said, you know, the weekly columns that, that Prater is writing, that people are agreeing or disagreeing with, uh, had a direct result of what you're doing. So, uh, you, you made, you helped to make that happen and we appreciate it. Well, and Hey, listen, we're, we're proud, proud sponsors because we love what you do, love what it means to our community and love the business model. It's great. Well, tell us more about BVA here and, and what you guys got going on. And, uh, you guys call yourselves Idaho's developer. And, uh, you, I mean, everywhere you look, there's a new, new project being built and you see the banner on the, on the fence and it says BVA. You know, we got a lot going on right now in, in downtown Boise and, and then out here in Meridian and Caldwell, uh, we're, we're really focusing on kind of the intermountain States. So we'll be expanding into a lot of areas there. Uh, we have a great team. I, I, I mean, I'm part of a team that is just incredible. Uh, the 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 culture. You walk in the office every day; it feels like family. Everyone's just working as hard as they can for the cause, and and uh, I, that's that's probably the best part for me is the people. We have an amazing team. I think you've met a few of them. I think yeah. you have a few of them on. Yeah, I think you, you got to get Corey Hall on we, here. That, at some that was point. part of the deal. We said we'd maybe try to get like a weekly segment yeah. with Corey or something. So yeah, we have Corey and Kakoa Nawahini. Yeah, He's one of our leasing guys who does a phenomenal job, and then. Uh, just a great group of folks that that do a, do a wonderful job. So, what would be your your uh, your pitch? I guess if it, what would you want fans to know about BVA or just uh, how how that uh, you know they can take advantage of some of the stuff you guys got going on. So, we are in a kind of a thriving market where companies are growing or coming here, and uh, that's what we do best is take take people where they are and say what what are your going to needs going to be with real estate and yeah. match them up. We have everything in house from our architect, our civil engineers, our construction team, and. And just taking care of people. These are long. I mean, you sign a ten-year lease with someone. You're, it's a partnership. Yeah. And we take care of people. And I think that's been the secret to our success. Well, so we, anyone out there looking for new space, uh, we would love to have uh, have have a chance to talk to you. BVADev.com, I believe, is the that's website. Right, right? That's right. I've had a chance. To come oh, hold on a second, Mike. I had your mic. There you go. I've had a chance to come out and in, in, in your building and, and walk around a little bit. And I love the vibe. You know, yeah. just the, the the casual vibe. Uh, the, the the human vibe the people vibe it's it's just it's just it's a competitive vibe and, and really smart people walking around and 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 i think you had a ping pong table out there and you got these open meeting rooms and it's beautiful and it's just it's just an open concept of, of just brilliant minds doing their thing and i really love the vibe of what you guys do out there thank you and the only other thing that i'd say with office people say oh office is dead covid work from home I mean, come on no. when you got the I golf mean, simulator in your office no, everyone's wanting to get in there I mean, but, but but people all companies, I would say yeah. that we that we interact with, are realizing they need to get people back to the office. So then, how do you get people back? You get them back in spaces that inspire. Do your space? Do your space? The space you work in does it reflect your values? Does it make you want to come to work? And so that's what we're trying. Well, that's what we're experts at is getting people back to the office in places that they love working. Now I know you got cowboy boots on though, but uh, you're up. So how did you do, Mike? Oh, geez, how I many got points? seventy six points. 76, but I don't know if that's good or bad. Seventy six points. We're gonna wish uh, Tommy, Mike, take his chair while we're. Uh, well, he's well, he's going here, but uh, you, you, your first shot, you didn't. You were going to the wrong target, though. <laughs> so I got seventy six points on eight shots, but that's all right. That's all. He's got much nicer shoes than I do. Look at those boots, holy cow! Yeah. So Tommy, uh, he probably has an unfair advantage too. He literally has a golf simulator in his office that they can uh, <laughs> take time to our uh, partake in. But uh, uh, he know, see, he knew where he was going. He had time to think about this. This might be an unfair fight here, uh, Mike Prater. Yeah, but, I'm going to get my butt kicked again. But, but that's okay. You're uh, you're working and you're playing golf, as you said. So yes, there's, sir. there's worse things out there. Yes, sir. Uh, 
<laughs> what do we got? Uh, Idaho sports talk. I know it's been the, the QB has been a big talk on the QB controversy, the QB battle. What, what's been the pulse of uh, that you've seen on your show and on social media and just where everything's, uh, you know, Tommy's obviously got the positive outlook, the positive approach. A lot of people agree with him. Um, but what, what, what have the last couple of days, Mike, been on your post game show and, and your show? Yeah, certainly the quarterback situation speaks for itself. And there's been a lot of healthy conversation about that. Yesterday, we did a, a team green and a team Madsen uh, conversation. I was really surprised about the team Madsen results. A lot of people want Team Madsen. Now, it's a small sample size, and I know that there's tons of love for, for Taylor and Green, and that's not really the point here is to divide and, and, and conquer. And, and we're getting a little bit of heat in the media. When I say we, the media in general, for creating this quarterback controversy, we really didn't create this, guys. Andy Avalos and Bush Handham stood up behind the podium on Monday and said, we have a quarterback issue. We're going to play them both. We're not even sure who's going to start. I need three days of practice to try to figure this out. And by the end of today, this football team should have a pretty good idea of what's going on. I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, maybe it's because of the word quarterback controversy. This is a healthy quarterback competition, and that's really what it is. But we also realize here that the biggest issue with this football team is the defense, and it's not even close, guys. The quarterbacks, I think they're splitting hairs, trying to find a nice competitive advantage to do with the quarterback. But this defense is historically, historically bad. I think there's only been four seasons in the history of Boise State football where a defense has averaged more than 30 points a game. This year's team is on that list. In terms of yardage allowed, uh, this team right now would be the second worst season in the history of Boise State football in terms of defensive yardage allowed. So there's some back half issues. Chevin Cordero's coming into town with an explosive offense. Again, explosive is Andy Avalos's word. And uh, I'm very excited to see how Boise State can respond this weekend defensively, offensively. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to be pretty good, BJ. Yeah. And I think we're going to have ourselves one heck of an LED light show party about 10 o'clock on Saturday Hold night. on. He's taking his last shot here, and he was down by nine. Let's see. Oh, he overshot it. He overshot it. How many points oh, did he get? To him. They just gave it to him. Did it, did it bounce in? Okay. On the final shot, he just beat you, Mike. 82 to 76? On the final shot, he just, it. On the final shot, he just beat you here. <laughs> oh, man, that's good stuff. Tommy, any final words for you before we uh, get out of here? We we appreciate your time, and it was uh, a great show here. But uh, you're speaking to Bronco Nation here. Any any final words, Tommy? No, just, hey, listen, this is where we live in the greatest community. Let, let, uh, go all over the country, world greatest community i think in the greatest state in the greatest country and i'm just grateful to be here i'm grateful to have the opportunities we have in america and i think that i look at the boise state program and the advantages that it gives our kids and the community here i am a huge bronco fan because of that and uh we're gonna win saturday and turn this thing around and we can maybe take some credit if a turnaround does happen that we kind of kicked oh. it off here at Top Golf. <laughs> uh, I really, threw, I really, truly believe about ten o'clock on Saturday night they're going to be an LED light party in this town that's going to make every. It's going to be like one big giant warm hug about ten o'clock on Saturday night with the lights. It's I think taken it's us cool. over a month to see the light show in its truest form. But it'll be crazy. All those yeah. late games for all those years. Yeah, and then like they can't get go, one. <laughs> it's like all these midday games. <laughs> By the way, uh, they're doing two for forty on the hats here. I'm wearing the Top Golf hat, so we appreciate Bjorn and everybody for helping us out over here they got two for 40 on the hats and uh, they got a lot of different deals my family came for the uh, wing wednesday last night we brought the kids so you get 20 dollars you uh basically get twenty dollars off your gameplay with an order of wings so uh they got a lot of cool stuff going here and they're also asking you next time you come out to donate to the special olympics five dollars to support the special olympics and um you get your name on a little card here and they put it up on the wall and uh they're the it's uh they got a lot of cool stuff going on at top golf and you said the, i think the hours are uh 10 o'clock in the morning they open but on the weekends it's nine and uh, you can go to their website and uh, book your tea time and everything mike i did bring you i don't have as many gifts for you as i have for uh for uh, Tommy Alquist here, but I got you a couple, oh, more, a couple hey. more sleeves of balls uh, from from that we had left over there from the go. golf tournament. I, I'm so. playing with our buddy Baker on Sunday, so I'm going to need these. I'm going to need these. I'm going to put these in his face and take care of it. Who wins? You or Baker on that? Um, he's a little bit better golfer than I am, but I'm working my butt off to try to get hey. to him. I need to catch him. So, <laughs> Mike, final thing: did you did his uh, his explanation of the column disagreement and things? You guys good now? We're good. No, I, I think we're really good. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we're on the same page in terms of what Andy Avalos and the community support. Um, you know, I got a little dark and a little negative about the hiccups that are this football team is dealing with right now. They got to fix the quarterback. They got to fix that defense. But as to back to your point, that's just natural football in the course of a season. And everybody needs to take a deep breath, myself included, you including, BJ. And uh, I, I truly always appreciate this man's advice. 
Mike, thanks for coming by, making it happen. Tommy, appreciate you again for the sponsorship for coming by. And uh, I think we're contractually obligated to do this like five more times. So we'll we'll make this happen at some point again. But uh, appreciate Thank it, man. You. Thank thanks you a lot. Much. There he is, thanks. Tommy Alquist, Mike sure. Prater. We'll send you out with my uh, son from last night celebrating uh, his uh, – the, the Angry Birds game. The kids can play Angry Birds. They were knocking it down. The final, uh, you got the first one. The final one's going to fall maybe, and now uh, the kids get excited having some fun at Top Golf. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. Have a great rest of your day. Listen 3 o'clock to Mike Brader and John Mallory. We'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com.